The city's not really that desolate. It's not really that depressing. There's lots of things to do if you've got the money. And you don't need a lot of money to listen to music or go to a club. But if there aren't any clubs, if there isn't any music, you're snookered. It got to the point a while ago in Manchester where I didn't know what venues were operating or if they were on what nights. But in the middle of last year, someone tried to change all of that. Factory Records opened this place, once a yacht showroom and conservative club, now the Hacienda, a club for the future that intends to stay. In spite of all that, our Mancunian tale begins in London's EC2 with Ben Kelly, who was approached by Factory to design a club for them that would be in keeping with both theirs and Manchester's industrial roots. I mean, one of the things that interests me about the process of the design is, is finding materials that would be in a totally different environment and taking them out of that context and putting them into a new context. And when you eventually put all the elements together, you hopefully sort of establish a new language of materials that say something new and different. One idea was to use cat's eyes, which you'd normally see in the road, set into the concrete floor around the dance floor. Um, but there's one problem with that. We were a bit worried about females catching their high heels in the cat's eyes. So we came up with the idea of using bollards that uh, you'd see on the side of the road set in line with the cat's eyes actually on the dance floor so that they sort of act as a filtering system on and off the dance floor so there's an element of function involved with introducing them also to get over the problem with the cat's eyes but with color we used a fairly sort of anonymous color for the main areas but we sort of highlighted it with lots of bright colors and language taken again from industrial environments the sort of stripes that are painted around the place but when all the, the components come together, it's still functioning as a disco, as a live venue, etc. But um, you've kind of created a different type of environment without the, the normal references to disco interiors. And I guess we very much wanted to take it away from that. So the lighting system we introduced was closer to a theatre lighting system, so that um, it would relate specifically to the dance floor, but also that the lighting would relate to other elements that we introduced, um, the kind of archway and the, the wall at the front and to the bar at the other end, so that we could highlight other elements other than the actual activity of dancing in there. Why is it called the Hacienda? Well, um, that's a good question. OK, so this is how it all turned out. Well, I don't know about you, but it seems to me that whatever your first impression, you can't help but admire a group of people who've gone to all this trouble to create something of this scale and of this imagination. Now, whilst the design and the art was down to Ben Kelly, the whole project started as the brainchild of Factory Records. Tony, why bother to create the Hacienda? Why bother? Well, it's, it's necessary for any, any period to build its cathedrals. It's necessary for any youth culture to have a place, a sense of place, and Manchester had not had one for two years, and we found ourselves financially in the position that being the only people who were able to do something about it. And thirdly, it's necessary for a city like Manchester, which is an important city, and which has been important in music, to have the facilities that New York and Paris have, and not to have the facilities that New York and Paris have for the young people here would be a disgrace. But if you drive through Manchester, if you drive through the streets around here to get here. If you walked into a space that was anything else, that had velveteen sort of um, sofas, uh, sort of the renovated staircase approach of the Camden Palace, you'd feel you'd gone into something, someone's like saying, oh, you're not in Manchester anymore. But here you're still in Manchester, but, but the industrial shapes, the angular lines, the steel, is and can be beautiful. It's beautiful outside and it's beautiful inside. And what's the special chemistry of Manchester for you that would make you want to Manchester's do it? Manchester's a human city. It's a human city like New York like Liverpool is occasionally, and unlike cities like London. Well, London's um, amorphous to you, is it? There's a coldness about the people which doesn't exist in Manchester. Yes, and uh, I think Manchester has a sense of feeling. I experienced enormous enjoyment from it in 76, 77 period. And there seems no reason why, as we find now, when we built this place, we didn't know that 
on a Saturday night, it would fill with people. I mean, we made it very colourful, as if to say, we didn't know that audience would be there. You know, the last audience one had seen like that was 250 kids in shabby raincoats in rafters two years ago. And was there anybody here? And it may be something of a surprise, or not, that there is. And they, they dress in a way, in, in the bizarre vocabulary of the, the great large vocabulary of modern dress and modern actions, and the music is the music of the moment, uh, the only stuff that's really happening, and it exists here. Well, what kind of people in Manchester would you like to see coming here? Anybody who likes dancing. The wonderful thing about popular music is that it is a classless art form. Job descriptions don't enter into it, I would have thought. Age descriptions do. The ability to feel at ease with something that is today. The only requirement is that the ability to feel at ease, because people do feel at ease. What other things do you see in this club? I think there are a million possibilities and ideas which we haven't yet explored. Kids cartoon palaces, afternoon, Sunday afternoon um, antique markets, um, aerobics classes at lunch times, uh, uh, art centres. I mean, art centres is a horrible word, but I mean, places where there's one very good theatre group in Manchester I would like to see work here. There are a million possibilities, but the energy, first of all, has to go into concreting it, which is nearly there. Why is it called the Hacienda? Um, it's something to do with... Uh, a compliment. I've been here eight or nine times now, and I'll keep coming back, because it's not just another disco or a venue for bands to play. There are places tucked away that are quiet enough to have a drink and a chat. Even when it's full, you're not getting crushed to death, kneading the groin or having your drink poured in your lap. And there's such a variety of styles of dress that you feel you can just mix in without being sneered at even if you're slightly straight, which is what I am. I even feel I could bring my mum and dad here. The bar staff smile and the bouncers don't all look like ex-wrestlers. Having said that, the sound does suffer a bit in such a cavernous space, but that's something they'll simply have to work on. What is important to me is that overall it does restore a sense of place. That's it. Well, we're ready. A reading from a Situationist International, 1968. Formula for a new city. We are bored in the town. You really do have to be pretty bored to be still looking for mystery on the hoardings and in the streets. And you've forgotten. Your memory's ravaged by all the chaos of the planet. No longer leaving for the hacienda, where the wine ends in tales from some old almanac. Well, you've blown it now. You'll never see the Hacienda. It doesn't exist anywhere. The Hacienda must be built.